something which um, I absolutely love to talk about. Now, this is an updated presentation, something that's kind of been refreshed with some of the stuff that I'm seeing in today's marketplace. Um, thank you, Jason. It does look lovely, doesn't it? It's all freshly, freshly new. Um, but the, the big line there really is that subtitle. This is all going to be around generating business on social. So I am all about speed. I'm all about efficiency. I'm all about getting results as quickly as we humanly can. And with that being said, I have three specific aims selfishly for this workshop. Number one is to give you as much as I possibly can in the hour that we've got together. So if you haven't got notepads already, get a notepad out, get a pen out. You're going to be want to be taking notes throughout this. I'm going to be sharing with you insights and data behind all the stuff that I'm talking to you about. So, you know, more importantly, what you need to do and then also why you need to be doing it. I'm also going to take time at the end to introduce you to our academy that focuses all on social selling. There's a few of you on here um, that are part of the academy already. So good to see you. And I have one rule and one rule only with this. There are no questions off limits. I have built, I guess, this business pipeline 44 with the aspect of sharing absolutely everything that we do from revenue numbers to stuff that's working to all the biggest screw ups that I've done. And that's kind of, I guess, built the brand that I kind of have right at this current point in time. And that's not going to change today. So there are no questions off limits. Use the Q&A section to be able to ask anything that you want in relation to social selling, business marketing and sales. Now, this number of consultant businesses that I've spoken to is growing month on month. And just this month, I've already spoken to 50, 50 different businesses, and they're all saying the same things. This stuff doesn't change. There are reasons why people fail online. And what I want you to do as I reveal the five different reasons which are most common, I want you to reflect. I want you to take the time to think about your business right now, where you're currently at and where you might be struggling. And don't worry, I am going to ask you to share your answers, but no one's going to be able to see them, just me. I just want to be able to really bespoke this presentation for you today to be able to spend certain time in certain areas where you're going to get the biggest benefit. So then the first reason comes down to your product, offer and message. Now, with those three things that I've mentioned there, what happens is that if you don't get these right, you struggle to build credibility and therefore you don't generate as many leads as you possibly might want. And so number one is something that I'm seeing really, really often right now. I take time to deep dive into people's businesses, looking at their products, looking at their services. And unfortunately, what they're communicating out to their audience doesn't align with what their actual desires are. So that's number one. Number two is that quite frankly, the profiles that you're building right now, the, the social media activity that you're you're putting into action um, isn't worth following in the first place. So you end up blending in. Now, typical symptoms of this are low engagement, follower rates not growing very quickly, feeling like you're banging your head against a brick wall. That's something that's so common in today's marketplace because so many more people are using social now. And so you've got to get better at it. Number three is that you know you're good at what you do. You may be doing some of the right elements. However, your audience just isn't big enough, right? So this is a big thing here in terms of audience growth. And so like if you believe right now that what you have got is great and the product and service that you've got is great and your message is great and it's just the exposure that you need, that can be a big, big cause for failure as well. So number three is really important. Number four is the one that I find the most sexy that you might not, you might find particularly boring. But for me, I want to know that with every second, every minute, every hour that I put into social, that is actually going to give me something. And that's where this predictable and sustainable process comes into place. Most people don't have one. And what they end up doing is having a strategy that's based on if I just keep doing the same stuff and I remain consistent, that eventually someone might reach out to me and want to work with me, right? So they're the main key reasons why I'm seeing people fail at, the, fail at the moment. And what I'd love to know is one, two, three, four, or five, which one most resonates with you right now? And whilst you're doing that, I am going to answer Trevor's question here. So what's the brand, Chris or Pipeline 44? It's both. Pipeline 44 is our company brand, but I also have my own reputation that I'm looking to build as well. And I head up the marketing and sales front for the company. Right. So looking at this, there are a lot of fives coming through today, which is actually 
not as common as like what I normally see. Normally, it's like I say, a combination of three and four, which is cool. But actually, lots of fives coming through. Michelle's saying all of them. That's totally fine. I appreciate your honesty with that. Um, that will be a lot of people, I think. A lot of people will be resonating with that as well. It's a mixture of all five. Now, the good thing is, is that today I'm going to be sharing content and sharing you insights to all five of them. So with this, if you've got any single particular issue here, by the end of today, you're going to be understanding what you need to be doing to be able to start making that change, to shift it. And I'm going to be doing it by sharing you with, with this system. So this is the framework that we use to be able to teach everything that we do. And today I'm going to be focusing on three main parts. First part is clarity. Second part is connection. We're going to be touching on control and content, but then we're going to be deep diving into conversion. Now, just so you know, I don't spend very long talking about me. There is no sob story here. And there is no backstory coming along around how I've got to where I've got to, because I know deep down you really don't care. Like that information there on that screen is just so you realize that I've actually done what I've said that I'm going to be talking about today. Well, you only have to look at my profiles to see the endless amount of case studies, testimonials, recommendations there are out there. And um, this stuff is just fact. I just documented it from day one. Um, and my real mission with all of this is just to simplify everything. I feel that in today's marketplace, when it comes to marketing and sales, there is so much that you could choose to do. But what happens is, is that you do little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit. And you end up not really seeing the progress that you want. And you end up thinking that these things don't work. My job is to connect all of this to, together for you. So you can actually start to see where you need to be spending your time to be able to get the maximum results. And if you're not following me on LinkedIn already, and this is, I guess, the first bit of proactive engagement that you can get. If you get your phones out right now, open up your camera and hover over that QR code. On my LinkedIn profile, I, I share very blunt opinions on certain pieces of advice that I see online. I share lessons that I'm, that I'm going through building this business, but I also tend to offer quite a lot of advice to people in the same way. So if I see and we're connected, so if you connect with me rather than follow me, so when you go to my account, click the three dots and press connect. If you connect with me and I see some content that I think can be improved or I see your profile and I think you could edit it slightly, I actually give you free advice. Now, it's not to everyone. It's to a few people a week that I see on the newsfeed. So the more visible you are, the more likely you are to be able to get the, uh, the comments from me directly because I just can't help myself these days. So that's going to connect with me there. That will take you straight to my LinkedIn profile. I am also on YouTube if you'd like to find out more in-depth in content there as well. So I think we should start by addressing the first big question, really. And that is why social selling? I guess, first of all, what is it? Um, social selling for me is literally how to sell on social media. That's it. Most people default it to LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn as a platform. I'm going to be talking to you about LinkedIn today. But for me, when it comes to making money using social, there are some real key significant reasons as to why I think today's presentation is going to be so important for you. <clears throat> Number one is because we spend so much time on it we may as well make it work for us, right? And we automatically know that the more people that know what we do and how good we are at doing it, the more opportunity will come our way. Now, the reality of this is the fact that most people don't tell enough people who they are and what they do. And even when I then look at people's profiles, I still can't clearly understand why I would want to work with them. And so like, even if you have this feeling that you know you're good at what you do, but not really seeing the results, the real, real reasons why is because you're not effectively communicating what it is that people want, along with what people need, joining them together to be able to create the desire for people to want to reach out to you. And that's the psychology behind what I want to share with you today. Because when I'm reviewing accounts and I look at people's accounts, I look at people's landing pages. I look at people's sales funnels. I look at people's webinars. I look at it every single day. I spend hours looking at people's stuff. Like I notice that lots of people are active, like out of interest, who's actively using social media, trying to generate business right now. Give me a yes in the comments. Um, if you are like the most people are active and they are trying. But the problem is, is that the stuff that you're doing is inefficient because you've not got the key fundamentals in place. 
And so when you start proactively building your audience, when you start actually having a process that leads someone from not knowing who you are to suddenly being a raving customer of yours, when you start lining that process up and then you start doing intentful activity, that's where you start to see the growth that you're after. And when you then switch that mindset and start showing up in the ways that I'm going to be sharing with you today, like the rewards are crazy. Organic reach is something that I talk about a lot at the moment because it's reducing on every platform like whether you're on facebook instagram tiktok youtube with more users using these platforms the opportunity to reach people for free is reducing so like if you don't take advantage of it now like we don't really know how long it's going to take and what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch the comments so you can talk to everyone so just for this short period of time when you leave this comment Make sure you switch it on the chat so you can talk to everyone. But has anyone noticed a reduction in organic reach on any social media platform recently? Just give me a yes or a thumbs up in the chat. If you have. I just want you to see the common ground of everyone pretty much saying the same thing, right? It happens time and time and time again. And so what we need to understand is, is how to take advantage of it. Because there is some content that works, but more importantly, there is a lot of content that doesn't. And even though people are spending more and more time on these platforms, the opportunity is reducing. So if your engagement is low, it's really obvious that, again, probably hard to admit that you just don't know what content to put out there to be able to get the engagement that you're looking for. And so when you make the shift, when you implement what I'm going to teach you today, that's when inbound will happen. That's when people will start messaging you because you'll be clearly communicating what it is that you do why it is that you do it and what impact that you can have on the person that's reaching out to you. That's how we learn to play the game properly. And the third and final reason why I think social selling is so important right now is because you can go and spend time networking, right? You can go into events, you can go to conferences. I still love to do that. But the lead generation tools these platforms give you for now, like are incredible and you don't have to pay for them. The one that I'm going to be sharing with you towards the back end of today um, is called LinkedIn Events. Now, you may have heard them before. Like a lot of you may have actually been invited today off the back of an event. I'm going to be asking you that question a little bit later on just to try and get the gist of where everyone's come from today. But like these are lead generation tools, right? Tools that enable you to be able to gain data, gain prospects to then begin to nurture. And again, this is the beginning of that process part. If you don't have a process in place, what you're trying to do is actually technically sell on social media directly. And that's the biggest mistake that you can make. Let me repeat that. Trying to sell directly on social is the biggest mistake that you can make. And so with that, the question naturally is, is, okay, well, what do I do about that? The answer is you've got to build a process that moves people off of social media so you actually earn the right to be able to promote to them. And that's exactly what we use LinkedIn events for. Because over the last, what, nearly 18 months to two years that I've been using LinkedIn events as a tool, and there are 12 others that we we actually use and teach inside of our academy, like this one specific tool has generated us over 11,000 leads. That is email addresses, not just people saying yes, practical email addresses. Now, we've just started running Facebook ads again. We've just turned on our paid media engine, which is something that you should only do when you are converting organically. If you are spending, this is a thing to write down. If you are spending money on ads right now and you're not able to convert organically consistently month in on month out, you are may as well, you may as well be, should I say, setting fire to your money. Because here's the reality. 11,000 leads I've generated for free using events like this, a thousand people that said yes to the event. We got around about 300 email addresses from that event. From the one that I ran back in July, 843, we got about 150 email addresses off the back of those. We run these events pretty much every month. This was our Facebook ads account. Now, don't get me wrong, tiny budgets, 300 quid budget. You're never really going to see huge results from it. But can you see there where it says an average of £9.6? Can just put in the chat so you can see, just let me know that you can see it. Can you see the £9.16 per lead there? That's the cost per email address. So if we want 11,000 of those, that's over £100,000 I need to raise for capital to be or reinvest my own money to be able to get the same amount of contacts. When it comes to social selling, 
you have the ability to do this on platforms like LinkedIn for free. You just need to use the tools. And so this isn't difficult. Like I said on that first slide, none of this stuff is rocket science. You've just got to learn how to use them. And that's where I want to move into the first section here, which is all about getting the fundamentals right, like getting the right message, understanding how to position yourself, because then and only then will you start to be able to get the attention that you feel like you deserve. And when I look at this and I speak to all these different people around their personal brands right now, what I've realized is, is that most people are setting themselves up to fail because they're unclear on three specific things. Number one is their product slash offer. Number two is who they're trying to speak to. They're speaking to the wrong people and therefore wasting their time. And number three is their message. OK, so they're the three specific things I'm going to address in this section. I'm going to start with the product and offer. So what, again, I've realized from analyzing people's sales processes, the way that they're selling their products and services, and we've got nearly 300 members in our academy now, so we're doing this day in and day out. Most people are selling their time for money, and especially if you're, let me know, by the way, in the chat, are you, what is it that you specifically do? Are you like a consultant? Do you run a service-based business? Are you a coach? Let me know because I want to just try and make sure I get the language right in the way that I deliver this. So we've got a few recruitment consultants in here, videographers, marketing consultants. Okay, so lots of consultants, which is great. A few different trainers in there as well. Not the shoes, like actual trainers. That's cool. Live coach, coach speaker, fractional consult. Okay, great. So like, what I would categorize like the majority of you then, and I'm going to frame this for consultants and service-based businesses, is that most of you are selling your time for money. Now, I don't want to be unfair in that assumption, but I'm just going to go with it for now. So please bear with me. What I've noticed is with people in your professions is most of you are selling your time for money and think that it's just your time that people want. So like, I'll give you an hour. I'll add as much value as I can. I'll absolutely smash it out the park for you. You end up going into this like, persuading and convincing mode and when we then take a step back what i've realized is is that again it's not your fault you just need to take the time to work it out right the people that you're trying to sell your time to don't really understand what they're buying because you've not labeled out the outcomes in language that they understand and therefore they don't have the desire they don't have the urgency and what happens is is that they end up not saying no by the way they don't go no i don't want that they just ghost you. Anyone relate to that? Does that does that sound familiar to anyone right now? It's like you never get a firm, no, I'm not interested. It's more a, I'll look at it a little bit later on. Like maybe, maybe soon, like Simon, Michelle all, all relate to this, right? It is something that I see time and time again. And so what you need to identify and take the time to do it, put this on a piece of paper is really working out what it is that your audience want right now that you can consistently deliver. So it's a big thing here. It's not about just writing down what they want and then trying to figure it out. It's identifying what they want in the industry which you serve that you can consistently deliver over and over again, because that's where you then set the expectation so people then understand what it is that you do. When you then start to do your marketing, the feeling that you want is them going, oh, that makes so much sense. I really need that. And when you get that moment in, that is when things click into gear. So that's the exercise I want you to do. Like write it down. What is it that your customers want? And then what outcomes can you consistently deliver for them? And then wherever they match up, that's your sweet spot that you need to find. And then with that, you craft your product and offer so it fits into place. And this is something that I think probably will really hit this home for you because I was back in February 2020 selling something or attempting to sell something that people just simply didn't understand and therefore didn't want. I used to sell an Instagram two day masterclass for 500 pounds. I used to go to every single networking event possible. I used to speak all over the country and I used to slave away trying to sell this product. And I didn't know why, because it was great. The information was great. It would really help people grow audiences and make money. I've been doing this for quite a while now, and it was working. No one was buying it. And I used to blame them, but actually I needed to blame myself. And so what I did was, was I actually switched it. I thought, how can I revamp this to create something new? 
And what I did was I created a new program. So in March, the following month, rather than trying to sell that room, there were seven people. I sold the tickets for 500 quid. It's like three and a half grand of revenue. After you pay for the room, I was barely washing my face. So I switched it. I was like, I'm going to take this online. Bearing in mind also, look at the date. This was when something hit the world and it turned it upside down. I had to go online as well. I switched it. I switched it to a, a how to gain a thousand followers in 30 days challenge. It was the same content in the Instagram two-day masterclass, the same content. But what I did was I switched it so it was outcome focused. Now, what I want to know, and again, I'm going to switch this to everyone again, just so you can talk to everyone again for this. Can you see how a subtle change from an Instagram two-day masterclass, which was me selling my time for money, to suddenly be an outcome-based online, how to gain a 1,000 followers in 30 days, can you suddenly see how, if you switch your chat to everyone, so everyone can see this, right? I want everyone to see it if you can. Let me just make sure I've done that properly. There you go, right? Can you see suddenly the impact that that would have? So much more attractive, Right now, the difference was rather than making three and a half grand, if I click through, it was twenty five thousand pounds in literally less than a month. I had never made that much money online before, but it made me realize the impact of reframing. And so what I started to do was really try to focus in on how I can help other people do the same thing, because this was like inventing fire to me. I'd be slogging away for a year selling something that people just didn't understand and therefore, a subtle change like that, same content broken up, suddenly revenue went up. Now, I know this can sound really simple, but the amount of people that I saw doing this and selling things that people didn't really understand was literally mind blowing because Sasha was one of them. Sasha was my PA at the time and she was looking at growing, growing her business. She's actually done a post today. If you go to Sasha's account um, on LinkedIn, she's done a post today because it's an anniversary of when she first started doing this. But she was my PA and I knew how great she was, but she was packaged up in an hourly rate fashion. So she was getting into these like consistent price battles. And so what I did was I sat down and went, look, Sash, like, what are you really good at here? And what I'm going to do is tell you what I want, because I want someone that's going to be able to do a multitude of different things. I need to make sure that I'm never really having to manage my diary. I need to make sure that my social media content is scheduled and I need to make sure that all my communication is managed. So what I need you to do is just create me a service that does those three things, put me into a monthly retainer so I know exactly what I'm going to spend every month, contract me in for three months so I actually use you. And then from there, take that out to market, because that was what I wanted. I wanted certainty. I wanted to understand exactly what I was going to get. I wanted the expectations really clear. And then from there, we took that package and pushed her out to market. And getting those things right allowed her to triple her business in four weeks. Suddenly, she wasn't trying to fight for the people's time. What she was fighting for was, look, if you want my services, this is all I do. And I'm the best out there at it. And with it, again, that subtle change saw a spike. And this is where I really need everyone to really focus in. I don't care how experienced you are in what you do. Are you framing your offers and your products in a way where people actually have the desire to buy it? If not, we need to do some work. And that's where I want to move into audience here. So the first thing, and it, it is quite a hard thing to do, right? It is. That's why it sometimes helps, especially, by the way, when you're trapped in the day-to-day -day of your business. When you're under the hood reacting to everything, it's really difficult to see the wood from the trees. So what we have to do is we have to take you out of the day today for like 20 minutes and you go through a set of questions we do with everyone to get people really driving through because it's not easy, but it is possible for everyone. And when you do that, you can then look at your audience because we all want more followers, right? We all want our network to grow faster. But what I've noticed is, is that, and again, I want you to, again, self-check yourself here. Like when you are building your audience, out of interest, are you building your um, your network on LinkedIn right now? Simple question, yes or no? Are you building your LinkedIn network every single week right now? The majority of you, I bet you are. My question is, are you actually checking if those people are active? Are you actually checking to see if those people are on the platform using it every day? It takes an extra 15 seconds. But actually, if you're only connecting with people that are active, your network's going to grow so much faster because you're at least getting the opportunity to be seen. Now, all you need to do is go into these profiles that you're connecting with, just go into their activity sections on their profiles and check if they've posted or reacted 
in the last week. That's my criteria. If they haven't, I ignore them. And with that, I saw, because we track however many connection requests we send, we then track how many have been accepted, right? And so with that, we know that if we check the activity levels where it was 25% exceptions rate, it went up to 65%. That is a huge increase by doing something that just takes an extra 10 seconds. Trevor, do you want followers or connections? It doesn't matter either or. You can only have 30,000 connections on LinkedIn. So there is a cap. However, um, both are totally fine. For me, most people overcomplicate audience building. I want to strip it back to three things for you. If you want to build an audience, make sure you, you're connecting. When, when I say connecting, it's not just network building on LinkedIn. When you go to an event, rather than giving your business card, connect with them on social media. When you go to a conference, connect with them on social media. When you speak in rooms like this, you'll notice I drove you to my LinkedIn profile to connect with me because I know that the majority of you won't want what I've got to sell right now. You might not be ready for it, but actually in the future, you'll realize that it is the thing for you and you'll come back. If we're not connected on social, you'll end up going to someone else that can't deliver what we can. That's just the truth. So connect everywhere that you possibly can. Collaborate. So when you're creating content, don't just think about your content on your newsfeed. Think about how you can get exposure to other people's audiences. What podcast, write this down. What podcast can you get onto? What YouTube channels can you can you get onto to be interviewed on? What stages can you get on to speak on? Like all of this is going to give you additional exposure, but also position you as an authority and someone worth listening to. And then with that, then comes creating content. So creating your own content. Most people put too much pressure on themselves to create content for growth. Unfortunately, if you create for growth, you only hold yourself back. You want to be sharing stuff you're passionate about and you're opinionated on. And with that, your audience will grow. This is a prime example. Nick, I'm not too sure if he's on today, but Nick started off as my business partner, once of rule, right? And we looked at his account because he wanted to take it seriously for once. This was about a year and a bit ago. Now, with that, um, he was posting this sort of content. And you can see 20 reactions, four comments for his following at 4,000 at the time. Not particularly great. So we switched it. We created a content plan and started to get him out on his profile. We need you at the front of your profiles. If you're wanting to build a personal brand and build your reputation and build pipeline using social selling methods that I'm talking today, you cannot hide behind your account. You've got to get out in front of it. Now, you don't need to share photos of your family and kids, but that is something that Nick is passionate about and wants to share. But you can see 20 reactions, 144, 56 comments. We did it again. 211 reactions, 86 comments. We did it again. 347 comments, 196 comments, sorry. 347 reactions. We did it again. That sort of content is what you need to feed the platform with if you want growth. This was Nick's stats. We check this. Um, Abhishek will actually answer that at the end for you. If you put it in the Q&A section, I'll answer it for you. But here you can see connection total at the bottom here, 4755, 11th of May, 2022. Nick has now overtaken me. This is an old screenshot. He's now over 17,000 followers in just over a year. He has grown 13,000 followers in just over a year, just from following the content methods. It is not difficult. If you want to go and hack it, go and just look at the content he's been creating and start feeding the platform with it. Your hooks are so important. I'm going to be talking about content a little bit. But when you start knowing who your audience is and where they're spending your time, that's where you'll see the growth. And then we move into message. So when I look at most people using social, they seem to be following advice from people that aren't practicing what they preach, that aren't giving you the context. I did a post the other day about a guy called Alex Hormozzi, amazing bloke. Like, I respect him. He's done more in business than I've ever done, like, like 10, 15 exit. However, he fails to provide the context to micro businesses and therefore sets them up for fail failure. And that's the bit that I don't like. He tells people to... Oh, like add loads of value, just like put out as much information as you possibly can. And what happens is, is that this information, you just scroll right past. You think that just by talking about the problems that you solve, by sharing the pain that they must be going through and feeling, that again, people are going to react to it. They don't. People don't want to hear about their problems. People don't want to hear about their worries. What they want is to see someone either inspire, educate, or entertain them. 
And that's what we need to drive. And what most people treat content as is like a chore, like a tick spot, like a tick box exercise. You put out content because you know it's important for your business. Give me a yes in the chat is that if that's the way that you feel. You share content because like it's just something that you've got to do. Like this is a big feeling, and it's why ninety nine percent of it doesn't work. What you've got to find is your voice and what you really are passionate about. And suddenly then you come alive in your content creation. And what happens is when you start to do it, you don't end up blending in. Like, let's be real here, right? When you log on to LinkedIn, you scroll past 20 pieces of content before you stop on one, don't you? So how do you be the one in the 20 that people stop on? That's the sort of content that Nick was posting. That's why his following grew so quickly. And Nick Holt is another prime example. I don't know if Nick's on today, but Nick specializes in SQL. He teaches people a certain uh, piece of information. Now, Nick was posting about the importance of SQL on LinkedIn. The problem is no one cared. And therefore, his following didn't grow. If you've got technical information you want to share, LinkedIn is not the place to share it. Share it on YouTube where people are actually searching for the answers. LinkedIn is about building relationships as much as I hate to say it. It's about sharing the real version of you and getting people to connect with it. When you do that, they understand what you do and how good you are at doing it. That's when all the word of mouth comes, the re the referrals come and the inbound comes. Um, Diana, I could never explain SQL. It's something IT based. But if you Google it, you'll see the answer. Uh, but this is a key question that you all need to answer. Like, why should someone follow you? Um, Eric is someone that we worked with about a year and a bit ago. He's now gone skyrocketing on LinkedIn recently. But what you've got to do is the same thing that we did for Eric right at the root. Like we've got to take time to work out what the platforms want, right? What content types do they want? Do they want photos of us on that, like on there? Is that the sort of content that's going to go? Um, do they need certain headlines, like clickbaity headlines to drive? Do you want carousels and graphics? You then need to work out the answers to these two questions. What are your audience engaging with? And then what do your audience also want to need? They're three questions. They're like a triangle that you need to work through. And then from there, we need to work out how we're going to get the best version of you out there as well. That's what we did with Eric, 50,000 followers. But you can see the reactions in the comments. This is the sort of content that LinkedIn wants. This is it. However, it's done in a really, like, really, really powerful way. Like the little like particular details, the color contrast, the way the red text pops you with Ted. He uses industry well-known things to be able to grab, att grab attention. Ted, Ted Talks, is the thing that he's using there to drive the attention through. He's using big relatable topics and conversational subjects to be able to drive reaction. So what you need to think about is what's going on in the world right now that you can talk about that other people want to share an opinion on. I did a post the other day about Tyson Fury's series on Netflix. It's gone absolutely viral because I shared some very, very probably like blunt opinions on it. Right? I disagree with lots of people about it. Go and look at the post if you want to see. I don't want to get into it now. Too many politics. Um, but this is something that I speak to lots of people about. Jamie was another one. Um, Jamie's a property educator. He has a training company. We work a lot, a lot with training companies. We had to work out what his prospects wanted and needed in the training space. They didn't want another two-day property course. What they wanted it was the combination of accountability, coaching, and education. If you're a consultant right now, you need to find a way to productize your service if you want to stand out. Because without that, unfortunately, you're just going to be selling your time. And that's not what people want to need right now. So you need to flip it. And then from there, you commit to getting that best version of you out there, like we did with Jamie. Jamie didn't just focus in on LinkedIn. We taught him, we spoke to him about YouTube and got a strategy out there for him as well. Now, his YouTube channel took off more than I ever expected it to. It's got over 90,000 subscribers in a year and a half. It's ridiculous. I and mean, then Jamie, because, again, the product and the offer, the audience and the message all came together, it took off. And so what I'm going to do at the end of today is give you the opportunity to speak to me about this stuff. Right. So it's a free on the house call. And what we're going to be talking about is your message. Right. The, the, the things that is going to enable you to stand out. We're going to look at your product and offer and also like the relevancy of it, how to drive urgency, how to drive scarcity. We're going to look at your current brand positioning and try and work out a plan for you. Yes, we will talk about like the services that we can offer you potentially later on down the line as well. That will be a thing that I'm going to be talking to you about today. Um, but if you'd like one of those calls, 
this is your chance to be able to book one of those in. There are certain spaces in my calendar available. All you've got to do is get your camera out, hover over that QR code, or use the link below, pipeline44.com forward slash apply. That will give you, there's a set of questions I need you to answer. Please answer them. If you don't answer them, I won't be able to participate on these calls in the way that I want to. We do not reschedule them. So the times are the times. I've opened them up over the next few days for you to be able to do them. So QR code is there. It's pipeline44.com forward slash apply. Um, I will put that in the chat box for you as well, um, just so you can see it. And then from there, we'll then finish up Clarity. There you go. That's there for you as well. So to finish up with clarity, um, let me know, by the way, if you've booked in one of those calls, give me a thumbs up in the chat as and when you, you do. There's no rush on it. Um, I'm not going to read all of these out. I'm going to summarize the one that's there for you to be able to take a screenshot of that. Right. But the biggest one is you've got to be open to change. If you're not open to change, unfortunately, we can't help you. 99% of the time, there is something that needs to move. You need, you need to change your messaging, your offer, product, or the way that you're um, communicating with your audience. Really important. Part one makes sense. Just give me a thumbs up or a yes if part one has made sense. Just double check it for me. Make sure you're all still with me. Good stuff. I know a few of you are filling out your calls. A few of you are raising your hands as well. Great stuff. So part two is about connection. So when it comes to building an audience online, so when it comes to the front end of social selling, there's two things that we need to do. Number one is build an audience. Number two is control it. I'm going to talk to you about building it to begin with, because this is all part of that process. There's three activities that you need to do to be able to build an audience. I spoke about collaborating earlier on, right? I spoke to you about creating and also their network building. So with network building, it needs to be done every single day. Now, typically, your limits will allow you to connect with anything between 100 and 150 people per week. If you are not maxing out those invitations right now, find someone who can do it for you. We do it for 100 quid a month for our carry members, right? It's cheap as shit, but you've got to do it. It is button pressing, right? We only take people on if they're just lazy enough and they just can't be bothered to do it anymore, right? So if you can't click buttons, this is just not going to work. It's 150 requests a week, 150 button clicks a week, and your audience will automatically grow. All you have to do is start tracking it. We do this with every Academy member. Just take a note of your number. Jack Snow did it here, 265. The next day, 272. The next day, 281. The next day, 298. The next one, 304. Every day it grows if you focus in on it. So network building, just press the buttons. Like it is not difficult to do. Just put 10 minutes at the front of your day just to get it done. After that 10 minutes, then you can create your content. So again, you can see what Donna's put there. The her, She saw a massive spike of impressions from 500 that you can see here to 7,300 just by using a headline technique. I'm going to talk to you about that headline technique at the end. But most, when it comes to their content, like I said before, post boring information. And so what we need to do is actually work out what we want to stand for. So there's a question that I need you to answer. What is it that you, as a person, are opinionated about, passionate about? What are the certain things that you champion in life that you want to really talk about? Certain things that I will talk about are, um, I talk about anti-bullying quite a lot. I talk about mental health quite a lot and some things that I agree with, some things that I don't agree with. I talk about business. I talk about young entrepreneurship. I talk about sales and marketing. All stuff that I have opinion on. These are all macro topics that I then go and talk about. What I then do is then utilize that content with strong, powerful headlines to feed the platform with what it wants. I'm going to give you an example of this in a second. Now, I don't reach millions of people. I don't need to. I post three times a week. I don't post every day because you don't need to. But what I then do is get exposure to other people's audiences as well. So I go out there and proactively interview people on my podcast. I always say to people, it's a good thing to get, to be able to start building relationships up with CEOs if you want to. Great way to start the relationship of is, oh, you've got an inspiring story. I'd love to interview you. That way you then build some rapport up on the interview and then conversation develops rather than just trying to sell to them straight away. When we start doing this right, it's amazing how quickly it changes like this lady here, this is Nadine, I believe, landed a contract to run two masterclasses at three and a half grand. And they came to her because of the increased visibility. 
right? Catherine Stringer, does there need to be a consistent theme as your topics were quite different? No, there doesn't. That doesn't mean there need to be a strict content plan. You can see here, this was just the last week. Now, I don't get, again, hundreds of thousands of impressions whatsoever. I don't. And again, this for me is just about sharing what I want to share. What I've got to say about LinkedIn, everyone is going to hate. Can everyone see why that headline had such a big interaction? Give me a yes if you can see how that headline could generate those sorts of results. This is all about talking about the stuff that I know my audience are going to be triggered by. There's the Tyson Fury one below. You can see, always thought this bloke was a walking contradiction. This Netflix series proves it. Again, can you see how the headline drives performance? I hate the term personal branding with a sick face. Can again, can you see how those headlines are really important? I don't think many people spend enough time on their headlines. And so we help them in the academy write them because it's such a thing that drives impressions up. When it comes to the visuals, this is the sort of stuff that I share. So at the top there, that was my property business journey. So I documented it from day one, from the first house to the 65th that we managed with our letting agency. And then at the bottom there is my speaking journey. Amazing how when you start documenting the fact that you speak, how more people invite you to speak. Because again, most people just don't even know that you do it. The captions, you can, again, you can watch this back if you want. But like I say, with this, my captions are all about show showcasing credibility. So on this left one here, you can see resulting in £4,100 of profit. You can see here £600 per month profit from property you don't even own. This was all subtly seeding the importance of working with us. And again, you can do the same with your coaching, consulting or service-based businesses. Philippa did this amazingly well. And when you get a viral piece of content, you can see here 456,000 impressions. She grew from 7,096 followers to 7,605 days. 32 messages of people wanting to work with her. Invited to be a guest on a podcast. And over 50 messages. Thank you for me, for me being a voice. We had to help Philippa be brave, right? We had to give her the support and encourage her to do it because it was a really important topic. And with that bang, it happened. You just need to find your topics. And then with that, you can spend a little bit of time engaging as well. So engaging is commenting. This can seem pointless. And what I don't mean by this is being in engagement pods, commenting on people's profiles and content that you're just not interested in. So many people do it. Like I used to be in one when I used to like see Carol's post and used to comment, this is so inspiring as she's posting about her cardboard box that's just arrived. You can see it a mile up. I, I was guilty of it. I tried them. It didn't work. Stop doing it if you're doing it. It's a waste of time unless the people in those groups are actually customers of yours or prospects of yours. That way, then you get to see their content proactively. Comments can be like, see, like can seem tedious. But let's think about this, right? Loads of people send messages into people's inboxes, but they get ignored. So if you send a message because everyone else is sending it, there's no desire from that other person getting the message to want to read it. However, when we post online, right? When we post, put a piece of content out online. I've just switched the chat box so it's open again to everyone. Make sure you answer this to everyone. When you post online, what is the one thing that you want to happen on that post? What's the one thing that you want every single time to happen, that you're waiting for it? Engagement, comments, reactions, for the first 10 people that react to it, I guarantee you go and look who they are. Right? Tell me if I'm wrong. Right? It happens all the time. So rather than sending a message to a CEO that he's never going to open or she's never going to open, why don't you go and leave a comment? Because then at least you at least participate in a conversation. Something so simple takes five minutes to do, but you have no idea the opportunities that can come your way when you get this right. So use it to your advantage. And when you get the combination of this right, that's where everything starts to change. So if you want to go and look at Matt Fletcher, go look at his LinkedIn profile, you'll see his topic is really, really interesting. I don't find it interesting whatsoever, but lots of people would do. Industrial process and manufacturing equipment. Right. Mark, can you ask that question in the Q&A for me, just so I've got it, because it's an important question I'll come back to. Like this, not the most fascinating topics, but this is the content. Look at the reach that he's getting. If you think your topic is boring and you, like this should blow it out of the water and make you understand that your content can travel as well if you just get the connection of it right, the headlines right, the visuals right. 127,000 views, 8,000 profile views. We then got this email or well, my business partner, Sam, got this email. Taking on 18 new customers this month. All have come through LinkedIn. Really surprised to see the profile views. 
All I've done is just try to get a piece of content out each day. That's it. We got an email then a few months later. Wanted to share some news and give you a little bit of a, um, I, can't, I can't see that word because Verity's got a hand up. Let me go there. An update, if you don't mind. I've had a £1 million deal done. We've seen you on LinkedIn. Like, this stuff is madness. And if it doesn't give you a bit of a kick to go out there and start doing it, I don't really know what will. So this is where we then move into control. So building an audience is one thing. What I told you is if you sell directly on LinkedIn, you will automatically repel people away. So you've got to take them off of the platform. This is all part of the process that you need to build inside of your businesses to get this working. What I mean by control, it's proactively going out there for business. So prospecting is something that everyone just does really like badly. And out of interest, has anyone received a bad direct message trying to pitch them directly over the last week or so? Um, let me know if you're if you're one like me. I get them all the time. Like they just get ignored. I just can't deal with them. It's painful. So what I always look at with messaging is what can you send someone in a message, right? That increases the likelihood of an additional touch point or a bit longer in terms of how long they spend watching you. For us, we provide four big pieces of value before any sale is made, four big touch points, four big um, amounts of dwell time. Now, that could be my free content on my socials is one. Number two is I give a lead magnet away called 100 Content Ideas. Um, if you want that lead magnet, by the way, just put 100 in the chat and I'll get it over to you afterwards. Um, make sure you're connected with me on LinkedIn because it will come. It's a, it's a guide that's got 100 Content Ideas on it. So that's another bit. We then have my YouTube content. We have this webinar. We actually have five because we have this workshop and then we have the strategy call as well, right? Here's a little trick for you, right? Uh, some of you can't see this because most people are sending it to hosts and panelists, but I've had about 50 of you say, yes, you want that 100 content ideas guide. If you don't get that reaction to your lead magnet, the thing that you give away for free, the thing that I give away here, as you can see, content ideas guide, your lead magnet needs changing. You need people like biting at the bit to try and get it. Like, you need them fighting for it. Now, out of interest, who now needs a lead, lead magnet? Because people don't really have that reaction uh, to when you actually ask if someone wants it, right? It's a big thing, like all the time. And this is the message. Screenshot it. You'll see, I don't want to have conversations with people. I'm not interested. I push people away. Like, if you want to learn about social, I'm your guy. Here's a YouTube video. Here's a link to a, to a guide that's going to be helpful. All I want is the email address. Even if this message doesn't get read, they will then see my content. My content will then most likely drive them back to the inbox if they're interested. They will then see this message and they will click through. This is the sort of process that we work with in the academy over and over and over again. So again, what we do is we have calls pretty much every week with each academy member. That's with me, one of the team, and we'll talk about the approach to their next workshop or their next value added piece, depending on their campaign. And what we do is we jump onto a call. And again, you can see here, we spoke on, on a Friday. She's redid her webinar as a back end of it because Alison runs webinars. And with that, then I then watched the webinar and gave a bullet point by bullet point feedback. This is what we do. So this is the part of the service that we offer. Bullet point by bullet point feedback, really specific to the things that she needed to change. From there, off the back of it, two clients straight away. These are the first clients that Alison got that hadn't that she didn't already know or hadn't been referred to her. This is so important if you're wanting to grow your business. If you are relying on inbound word of mouth and referrals, you are technically vulnerable. We need some form of outbound and proactiveness in terms of the way that you generate your leads. If you see yourself running workshops like this, this is a great opportunity to be able to run one. We teach people how to do those things. So some top tips for connection. Jules, lovely. I'm um, looking forward to speaking to you as well. Not a problem at all. Top tips for connection for you are there. Do you remember I said about Donna and that there was that hack that she used to be able to get the 7,000 impressions? That hack is that fourth bullet point there. If you go to Google and type in the emotions wheel, it comes up with a diagram. The top tip is with every headline that you now write, the top line to your post, just put one of the emotions in the headline and you will automatically see an increase. Here's an example for you. I had a conversation with a staff member the other day, dot, dot, dot. Number one, I'm disgusted with the staff conversations I had the other day. Can you see how the insert of one word completely switches up how that headline performs? 
Just give me a yes if you can actually see the difference. I had conversations with my staff the other day. I'm disgusted with some of the conversations I had with my staff the other day. Use the emotions wheel. It is a secret weapon for all of your content. And then with that, we move into conversion. So first, you've got to build an audience. Second, you've got to control it. Then you've got to convert it. My job today, I'm hoping you probably realize this already, I don't care if you like me or not. I'm on a mission to share the truth. And that's all I want. And this can come across as quite blunt. But in my opinion, people are wasting way too much time on this platform. They create content that no one engages. Instead, stop creating the content for now, switch it up, and then get people engaging with it when you start creating the other stuff. They're running lives to no one. So you're running a live event or you're running a LinkedIn live and no one's there. Like, stop doing it. Switch it up. Do something that's more effective. Sending messages with this, like, thing in their head of, if I just keep sending them, I might get one response. I might get one. I might get... No, if you're not getting at least a 30% response rate, I get people every day saying, thank you for your message, Chris. That was really helpful. If you're not getting that response, you've got to change it. This one is so common. If you're receiving comments like, oh, you're so good at what you do, but then that person then goes never goes on to buy from you, again, you need to switch it up. Because I have no doubt you're working hard. No doubt. But the problem is you're putting your effort in the wrong places. And that is my job. And the only way of really like, sh like showing you this is to like really share it with you. And what I'm going to share with you is how we implement this process and how Donna has done it. So Donna is a lady that I've worked with for a year and a half. Like this is the process that you need to build. I don't care if you're running webinars, if you're looking to have in-depth conversations, if you run strategy calls, I don't care what your approach is. You need a process that you can accurately measure what it is that you're doing. And this is exactly what we did with Donna. So Donna is a consultant. She had elements of the process in place when we began. She'd worked with other marketing people. I work with so many people that have worked with other marketing people before that have been banging their head against a brick wall. I'm just genuinely curious. Has anyone ever worked with another marketing person before? And unfortunately, it's not quite worked out. Give me a yes. Just let people know that this is a common thing in the marketplace right now. It is everywhere. And straight away, I'm going to give you what we noticed with Donna straight away. These are the gaps. She'd been using regularly, but the language that she was using was quite bland and boring, unfortunately. She didn't have a conversion piece of content in place. So she was selling direct link and direct messages, trying to get conversations booked doesn't work stop doing it she was posting content but it wasn't really showing off how good she was and she was posting content again trying to trying to pitch her services and again no one cares no one's interested the results were inconsistent it was feast and famine peak and troughs so and the reality was because of that she had no clear way of identifying whether what she was doing was actually working it was all blind and so what we had to do is create a six-week plan we do this for every member and Donna chose a webinar campaign to do it. She ran one of these like I'm doing right now. This is what she had in place at the beginning. So she had a profile, she was network building, she was messaging, and she had a lead magnet that no one was downloading. In six weeks, we'd gone through, created, and ran that process. We do that with absolutely everyone that we work with. So what we need to do is build out your process. And you can see here, every step of the way, from the webinar PowerPoint presentation to her content, to her profile, to her landing pages, to the conversion calls. We, we helped her every step of the way with feedback. We craft a message that works. We then map out that conversion piece of content. We then gave her the email campaigns to use, got that high value lead magnet in place. And then with, with that, we said, look, if you want this to work, stop doing everything else and just do this. As a result of doing it, she then had, and this is what you will have as well, a converting process that you can repeat. Within three hours of her work, first workshop, she generated six grand. Not huge results, but not bad for a few hours work, right? She then could set the date for the next one. So you run these every single month. And we know because of the data and the stats, exactly what we need to change. So we're not having to recreate the whole thing. I've ran this sort of webinar over 200 times now. I've never really changed too much with it. Just little elements to keep it refreshed. And with that, Donna had 80 people register, 33 show up, and two people booked the call. Those two people ended up buying. You can see on November the 11th, we then jump on, we have a bit of a celebration. Just because the process works, we then set the date for another one. And again, from there, rather than two calls, she then had five coming in. She got the same results. This isn't a one-off. Like this happens over and over and over again. And so if you're looking for these sorts of results, like we teach this, we do it with you. We give you feedback so you can't go wrong. Lorna there did it, 85 registered, seven breakthrough calls booked, two clients signed up. 
Angela the same way, Angie McQuillan the same way. Some stats there, three signups, 14 more calls booked in. What most people need is just more people to speak to. Is that right? Have I assumed that correctly? Just let me know. All you really need is more calls in your calendar of people that want to speak to you. You probably feel like you can close the majority of people, right? I don't know if this is right. This is just an assumption. You probably feel like on a call, when you speak to someone, like you can get them over the line. But actually, you just need a diary full of people to speak to. It's what lots of people want. Not everybody here by the looks of things, but actually a few of you um, going through. Again, Jane is in agreement with me as well. Let me switch that back. Uh, make sure the chat box is, um, is open again. There we go. So you can go through. But this is what we do all the time. Okay. So some top tips for conversion before we go into the Q&A. Um, don't guess your way to success. Let the numbers do the talking. If you are not tracking your numbers, I know it's not particularly sexy but it's so important. Like I know that if I don't get a 50% show up rate, that my reminder sequence for this webinar isn't right, so I need to work on that. The presentation's fine. I know that if I get 10% conversion minimum, I know that the whole presentation has worked. If it drops below 10%, I need to switch it up. And so if you want to start generating that consistent flow of leads, please stop thinking that you need to post hundreds of pieces of content. Stop overwhelming yourself. What you need is just a process in place that effectively nurtures that person to a point where they want to buy from you. You then need the promotional plan to give you the amount of people you need to be able to hit the sales targets that you want. I know how passionate people are when it comes to their businesses. So it's my job to simplify. And I hope I've gone some way to doing, for you, doing that for you today. Um, Hayley, if you ask that question into the q and I'll answer that for you. So I want to introduce you to um, the academy and how it works, because some of you has asked for that in the chat box as well. So you can't buy this. This is application only. We will talk about this on our call if you've booked one in or the call booking link is coming again. We will talk about it. And if you're the right fit and also if we're the right fit for you, you need to make sure that we're the right fit for you because we're very blunt and direct with how we work. Some people don't like the directness of what we do, but we're not coaches. We are consultants that are going to tell you what we believe is right and what we believe is wrong. And we're going to shortcut the process to generate in results and cut all the waffle out. Together, what we have done is basically built out a specific set of roadmaps for you to follow. And then we work with you one to one to be able to do it. Catherine, yes, startups are people that we work with. We also work with corporate entities as well. It's all bespoke because we work one to one with you inside of the community. What we will do is create the product offering, give you that message. So again, we're not going to ask you questions for you to figure out your message. We're going to tell you what your message needs to be. And then with that, we're going to take you through the process. So you get to a point where you've got people that are ready to buy with from you. We do it via that process. So this is the social activity process, the social selling framework. And that process is just one of nine that you can implement. We start with one. We get each step along the way within that six weeks. And then once that six weeks is done, we rinse and repeat that process over and over and over again. We will check you off. We track every single point in the process where you're at. So we know exactly what we need to do. And what we do is we agree deadlines with you. We will book a call in after that deadline to make sure that you've done it. And then when you have the call, we will review your work and then set the next deadline. So we force you basically through this process. If you can't give us two hours a week, we need two hours a week from you. If you can't give us that, this is not for you. We need that time if you want this process to work. At every step along the way, we will give you the bespoke feedback that you're after. And with that, like I've said, the reviews and testimonials, the reason we get the success is because we work with you directly to get this going. We look at every step along the way. Now, to give you the finer details of this, again, these testimonials are everywhere. You're probably not that interested in them, but if you want to watch them, they're there for you. So inside the Academy package, what you get is 12 months access to it. So you work with us for a year. You get personalized feedback every step of the way. That is on everything to do with your business, from marketing to sales, to conversion, to sales processes, to offers, to content, we work with you. You then get your own bespoke Slack channel so we can work one-to-one -one with you. And you get accountability to get this done. There is no point buying a training course and then not doing anything with it. We are going to drive you through this process. And then every Monday and Thursday, we have a group call where we actually deliver elements of the training and then have a Q&A section. We give you all the templates that you need from the presentation templates to the email templates to content templates to workshop templates. And we also have an in-depth sales navigator training program for those of you that are spending money on that right now. We have a two-week free trial if you want to trial it out 
but it's a seven sales navigator, two week free trial where we give you an in-depth training program on it. We give you all of that for the year for 150 pounds per month. I don't think we could ever do it any fairer than that. So please don't underestimate the level of support you get. We've got nearly 300 people in this community now. We share ideas and concepts every day. We will review everything from bottom to top because we are simply fed up with people wasting time on these platforms. If you can commit the time to us, we will get you the results that you're looking for because it is this level of detail that we go to. On to the point where you can see here, you have this, that, this slide at the 26 minute mark, but it needs to be much earlier on and to dangle the carrot in front of your audience. To that level of detail, to every single person, and you notice the name that's giving all the feedback. It's me for a lot of it. And then I'm backed up by an incredible team that helped deliver it as well. Like, this is the thing that I'm so passionate about. And this is why we get the results that we do. And actually within days, people are seeing it. Like Agar there, since we agreed, just the funnel structure, two clients in place. Our testimonials and reviews are everywhere, right? They're absolutely everywhere. And so there's two pieces of feedback that I want you to relate to. And it's the same line in both of them. If you want results in this stuff, just do what this man says. Just do what I say. Just do what my team take on the feedback and do it. Angie said the same thing. Just listen to him, do as he says, and trust the process. That is all you need to do. And with that, you start to really get this moving forward because we will give you everything that we can to get this working for you. And with Angie, we did the exact same thing. Angie didn't want to do webinars anymore. She'd given up if you read that review. We switched it around 17 calls booked and now starting to love it again. So with that being said, that QR code is the one that I put up earlier. If you hover your camera over it, there should be 15 call slots available. I don't know how many have gone now. It's 15 call slots available today for you to be able to book. Um, it's pipeline44.com slash apply if you haven't um, been able to use the QR code. Um, please let me know if that's worked. Give me a thumbs up for someone that's used that QR code or filled it out already. Um, just to let me know that it's working or okay, Abby, it is great stuff. Brilliant. And um, so with that, what I'm also going to do, um, I'm going to breeze through that because you already know what it is. 150 quid a month for 12 months. Yep. That's how it works. And for the first five that book, what I'm also going to give you um, is a one-to-one -one clarity session with me. So if you come on and you join the Academy, you're going to get half an hour with me bespoke on your business. Now, again, we will go hard and intense on this. And so for the first five, the book, you all work one-to-one -one with us anyway. So it's not like you're going to miss out on everything. But if you want a bespoke half an hour session with me, like at the front end of this, diving deep into your business, then for the first five that then join, um, we will get you that session included as well. Okay. And um, so that's how you apply. Your link is there for you to be able to do it. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to bring up the Q&A section um, and come through. Um, answer live and done. Will we get the slides afterwards? The replay of this is going live on my YouTube channel later on this evening, Michelle. So it's not the slides, but you do get the uh, the replay. Let um, me just get rid of some of these. It's not as many questions today, which is good. Um, Mark Batty, I missed the first two minutes. Been sending messages in chat, but no answers. Um, I'm not too sure what happened there, Mark. Um, get rid of that. Organic is um, John Hunter. Organic reach is having the ability to reach someone for free. So you post content and people see it. Organic reach is what the platform gives you. Cool, we've got a few. This is a few of the job titles in here. While the likes and comments rise when being a person, how much of that converts versus vanity? Michelle, it comes down to your process. Likes and comments drive impressions. Impressions drive new followers. New followers drive more, um, more people to potentially attend your events or workshops if you go on to run them. You need your follower number to grow to be able to drive the amount of leads that you get. So our content's job is just to get as many impressions as we possibly can to then get as many followers as we possibly can. I'm a digital marketer for a coaching business. The consultants want me to just use the company page for marketing. They're very likely to build their own personal pages. Any tips for company pages? Um, the problem with company pages is that the reach is really poor, Emma, as you probably already know. Um, so in terms of it, what I would always say is like, think about what the company page can become that someone wants to follow. So like some people's company pages are really like, right, this is the place to go if you want to, I don't know, learn how to use social media as a property investor. Like you follow my company page because that's the place, like the best place to go. So you give people a real purpose to follow it. 
And there are some big companies out there that do some, some amazing work. Company pages are my speciality. I'll be really honest with you. Um, I don't really use them because of the, the reduction in reach. Like, I find them a bit of a waste of time. I treat my company page a bit like my website, so it's there for credibility. Is it necessary to be a premium user on LinkedIn to use these features? No, it's not. So um, I'm only using LinkedIn sales nav right now because I've got a free trial. As soon as the free trial stops, I go back to the free version. The only thing that's really annoying is that it has search limits on it. So you can only search for a certain number of people, but I use groups and I use comment sections um, to be able to uh, get around that premium feature. So yeah, you don't need it at all. Uh, Donna, just put to call, is your program right for completely local service-based businesses at the moment on 100% time? Yes, it is, Donna. We have to talk about that in a lot of detail though. We need to frame your offer in the right way. So that's what we'll discuss on your, on your call. Amazing, Rachel. I saw a recent post on LinkedIn that they're changing the algorithm. They want to favor professional. I've seen this as well, Rachel. They also apparently prioritizing first degree connections. So what does that mean for the future of more personal growth? So the thing is with this, Rachel, people say this all the time, but it never officially comes and is backed up by data. So LinkedIn actually said that they want to put out and favor more professional content. The problem is with that is that they are at the mercy of their users. So their users engage with a certain type of content. The algorithm reacts. If you look at the way algorithms work, they react to the way that the users are behaving on the platform. Um, Ian, yes, it is exactly how we have a number of people in that sector that we work with. Yes, it is. Um, so with it, even if they say they want more professional, the users on it from their own reactions and engagement and comments demonstrate that they don't. And so what happens is the way that content is pushed from this platform, you have your first degree connections. Your first degree connections are more likely to react to something that's personal to you because they typically know who you are or know of you. So your personal posts are more likely to travel. The more first degree connections you get engaging with it, that then tells their connections. So it goes to the second degree. That then again goes to third degree. So it doesn't really matter unless they actually just say every selfie is no longer going to travel, which they're never going to do because they'll kill the platform. I don't believe the professional type of content is actually going to really take off. Personal content wins every single time. And I'm just going to go with the data. So the moment that changes is the moment that I will switch. Because if it does go to professional, it's actually a good thing for me because I've got a lot to share. However, it's not working right now. So I'll switch it and still use the type of content that is until the data tells me otherwise. I hope that helps. Um, should we DM people when they like a post and or comment on a post? So I tend to, if they comment, um, if I really focus in on like, and I see that they're the right person, I will go and direct message them to say, that, thanks, great to care, but what, what is it that you do? But it's very rarely, Mark. Like I tend to just follow my process and repeat it. So I'll comment. Um, I'll comment on a post if it's a target market. I do that five minutes a day, um, but I then don't message them. My my messaging comes in my copy and paste messaging at the front end. Um, so that then drives into my lead magnets on my videos. Can you share the slides? Um, they're on my YouTube channel. They'll be on there for you. Um, see you soon, Ian. Thank you very much. Um, how do you ensure you are speaking to the right audience? That takes a little bit of research to do, Haley. So I'm just writing up a new piece of content on this at the moment. Um, there's a few questions that you need to know. Number one is, are they directly impacted by the problem that you say that you solve? Number two is, do they have any urgency to solve this problem right now? If not, what do they have? Number three is, where do they then spend their time? Number four is, are they the decision maker? And then number five is, how do you get their attention? Is it directly going to them or is it by infiltrating their support networks to then get them to recommend and refer you in? Depends on your target market, but we work on that specifically together. And Mark, unfortunately, it's not. Because I allocate my time to you up front, um, you, we have to put the £1,800 per year in. However, um, we don't take the money up front. So it's £150 per month for the 12 months. Um, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to give you my time unless we had that contract in, in place. Um, Chris, do you think sending cold email can help approaching prospects simultaneously doing it? Yes, it does, but with the right cold email. So many people butcher cold email like they do cold DMs, and that's that's a big problem, so we need to work on that. Uh, Jason, great stuff. Could this process help any institution to recruit new members in a specific industry? Trevor, yes, it can. I, I'm yet to really find um, an, an industry that this doesn't work in. We've worked in as complex as pharmaceuticals and as simple as online coaching. Um, it works in every industry. I just need the time to be able to work out how it will work. Um, 
Sorry, what is included in the half hour strategy call? The first call you offer, the one with the QR code. And um, Simon, including that, we just have a conversation around your business.